Okay, thanks. Good afternoon. I'm presenting a study on the sense of agency in speech interfaces. So it's been recognized that whilst the technology involved in speech interfaces is improving, we have less understanding of the human side of the interaction. It's been suggested that an understanding of the cognitive processes underlying the interaction will give rise to design insights. So in this paper, we go some way in understanding a particular cognitive process, which is the sense of agency. So the sense of agency is the experience of initiating our actions to influence our external environment, and ultimately the feeling of being the agent of your action. So this has been studied extensively in cognitive neuroscience because it's thought to be central to, the, to control and free will and psychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia. So how do we measure the sense of agency? Well, you can simply ask somebody explicitly whether they were the agent of the action. However, there is a more implicit measure for the sense of agency. And this works on interesting things that happen to our sense of time when we feel like we're in control. So our perceived action outcome <coughs> interval is uh, smaller than it actually is. So um, we measure this uh, phenomenon which is called intentional binding. So, to illustrate intentional binding, well, firstly, it was uh, found to be the case in 2002 by Patrick Haggard and colleagues that when we uh, make a simple button press, which causes a simple beep, the time interval between the two is perceived as shorter than it actually is. So, the time of the action is shifted towards the time of the outcome, and the perceived time of the outcome is shifted towards the perceived time of the action. And these are called action binding and outcome binding. And also for involuntary key presses, it was found that this action outcome time interval was perceived as longer than it actually is. This is why intentional binding is seen as a metric for voluntary action. So the way that these perceived timings are assessed is via the limit clock method. And this is where a clock is situated in the center of the screen and a clock hand rotates around the clock. And participants report where the clock hand is when they make an action or an outcome. And this me method for measuring intentional binding has been widely used and replicated within cognitive neuroscience as a metric for the sense of agency. So more recently, intentional binding has been used to measure the sense of agency in XCI, where the action and outcome requirements have become slightly more complex. For example, settings such as new input devices, computer assistance, task automation, and human-computer joint action have all been investigated using intentional binding as a metric for agency. So despite this, it's still only been one modality which has been looked at, and that is manual action. So we thought it'd be interesting to explore whether this phenomenon occurs for verbal action. So this leads me on to the empirical study, uh, where we ask the question, does intentional binding occur for verbal commands? So the procedure, uh, participants sit in front of a computer, and they use a foot switch to start each trial. And here, uh, the clock is on the screen, and the clock hand starts to rotate. They're instructed to make an action, which is either, in this experiment, either a button, or saying the word go whenever they feel the intention to do so. There's a 500 millisecond time interval, and then a beep occurs. Participants then report the time of their action or outcome. So this was a within subjects design. So all the participants did both conditions. There were 14 participants aged between 20 and 40, and they did 320 trials overall. So a few things to note here. We had a very simple voice interface, which only classified one word. So the re reliability was very close to 100%. Also, the action point was measured by the computer at the end of the utterance, and then there was the 500 millisecond interval from that point. So our results show that for the key press condition, we get strong action and outcome binding for the key press, 
which results in significant intentional binding. And therefore, we replicate the original bindings. For the verbal command, whilst we see a good amount of action binding, there's a lack of outcome binding, and so intentional binding was non-significant. So our results indicate that intentional binding was not present for the verbal commands. However, a concern was that participants were actually reporting their action at the beginning of the utterance, not at the end. So this means that the action outcome time interval was 500 milliseconds plus the word length, meaning that there was a difference between the two conditions. So we repeated the experiments and took the beginning of the action as the, uh, sorry, beginning of the word as the action points. And our results replicated the first experiment where we found no intentional binding for the verbal commands. So the main implication for our study is that the lack of intentional binding suggests a diminished sense of agency. This provides evidence that user, users will feel less ex, uh, control when interacting with the environment via speech interfaces. So currently we have no concrete evidence to explain this result. We do offer some possible explanations in the paper. And the first comes from the fact that speaking has a high cognitive load. And it has also been found that con cognitive load reduces intentional binding. So this may explain our results. So we suggest that when designing speech interfaces, reducing the cognitive load may help users feel more in control. The second possible explanation comes from cue integration theory, which is the idea that all the cues surrounding our actions and outcomes, such as proprioception and vision, are integrated together and weighted by their reliability to give rise to an estimation of the most likely cause of an action. And there are obviously differences in the agency cues that we experience when we press a button compared to when we make a verbal command. So this also may explain the results. So for design implications, perhaps adding additional cues surrounding the verbal command, such as visual or audio uh, or haptic information, may help the user feel more in control. So with that, I just want to thank my co-authors, uh, David Coyle and James Moore, and uh, thank all of you for listening. Thanks. <laughs>